Tom Thurmond, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, accompanied by the host for today's ceremony, the Honorable William S. Cohen, Secretary of Defense, and today's co-host, General John M. Shalikashvili, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Please remain standing as honors are rendered. Please be seated.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the advancement of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the United States National Anthem. Please be seated. The Department of Defense Medal for Distinguished Public Service is awarded to Senator Strom Thurmond for exceptionally distinguished public service as Chairman, Ranking Member, and Member of the Armed Services Committee of the United States Senate from January 1959 through June 1997, and as a member, Veterans Affairs Committee from January 1991 through June 1997. Throughout his federal legislative career, Senator Thurmond established an enviable record for fighting on behalf of the military and veterans. While serving on the Senate Armed Services Committee, he took the lead in issues related to preparedness, morale, and other matters that provide for a strong national defense. As a veteran of 37 years of military service in the United States Army Reserve, Senator Thurmond recognized the tremendous debt our nation owes to its service members, and he considered any man or woman in uniform one of his constituents. Through the years, he assisted literally tens of thousands of military personnel with countless matters. 
His membership on the Veterans Affairs Committee was marked as a period of deviation to improving benefits and services for those who have served our country. Senator Thurmond is a faithful, unfailing, and unflinching friend of our armed forces. He carries out his duties in a nonpartisan and courtly manner. Being motivated only by a desire to do what is in the best interests of the United States and those who protect her. His seemingly endless list of accomplishments and records is nothing less than impressive, setting a standard for public service that is worthy of emulation. His actions represent the very best of this nation and bring great credit upon himself, the United States Senate, and the Department of Defense. Signed, William S. Cohen, Secretary of Defense. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General Shalikashvili. Senator and Mrs. Cohen, Senator Thurman, Mrs. Moore, members of Congress, fellow members of the Joint Chiefs, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by saying to the honor guard and to the band, you've never looked finer and you never sounded better, and you are truly magnificent representatives of all those terrific young men and women in uniform that we have stationed throughout the world. How about a big hand for them? I know that I speak for all of you here today. 
when I say how each and every one of us, how very proud each and every one of us is to be here to honor a true American legend. And so this morning it is with very great honor that I offer a word of tribute to the truly great American, Senator Strom Thurmond. The entire nation knows Senator Thurmond as the President Pro Temp of the Senate, as the Chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, and starting last month as the longest serving Senator in the history of that august institution, the greatest deliberative body in the world. As a member of the Senate for uh, As a member of the Senate for over 41 years and a member of the Armed Services Committee for over 38 years, Senator Thurman has worked tirelessly to ensure that America has the military power to exercise global leadership that is so very important to protecting our interests, to ensuring our prosperity and preserving peace. For he, more than anyone, understands Elliot Root's admonition that to preserve peace, our nation must have armed forces ready for war. But I would like to take a few brief moments, if I may, to talk about a part of the Strom Thurmond story not so well known, but to us in uniform, the most important part of his story. You see, not many Americans know that Senator Thurman embarked upon his legendary career of public service in the 1920s, beginning in county government and rising to a position as circuit judge even before the beginning of World War II. And although well past draft age, with war looming, Senator Thurman, a reserve officer since 1924, volunteered for active duty, serving in both the European and the Pacific theaters. In 1944, he was attached to the fabled 82nd Airborne Division, and on D-Day, landed in an assault glider in the hedgerows of Normandy, deep behind German lines. And for the next 10 months, he fought his way across Europe, through France, through Belgium and Luxembourg, and into Germany. Towards the end of the war in Europe, he found himself in Czechoslovakia, where he helped to liberate Nazi concentration camps. Wounded, cited for valor, and decorated by numerous foreign governments, Senator Thurman served in every major European campaign and earned the respect of his fellow soldiers for his courage, for his quiet professionalism, and his inspired judgment. The same qualities that have made him such a great senator. George Washington might have had Senator Thurman in mind when he said, when we assumed the soldier, we did not lay aside the citizen. And true to that saying, after the war, Senator Thurman led two lives. One as a distinguished governor and senator, and another as a leader in the Army Reserve, among other things, the founding father of the Army's civil affairs community. A rising star in two constellations, destined in one to become a major general and in the other to become president pro temp of the Senate and chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee. And as a senator and as the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, his unwavering support to our men and women in uniform, in readiness, in modernization, in health care, in retirement benefits and in compensation has earned him a unique place in the hearts of every sailor, soldier, marine, airman. And during my four years as chairman, the opportunity to work with Senator Thurman, now let me correct that, to work for Senator Thurman, has been a high point of my career. His wise counsel, his genuine affection for those who wear the uniform, and his personal kindness are memories that I will long cherish after I hand over my office to my successor. And so, Senator Thurman, on behalf 
my fellow Joint Chiefs, and all the men and women of our armed forces, please accept our congratulations on your record of service, and please accept our most sincere appreciation for all that you have done for us in your lifelong service to our great nation. And sir, may God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of Defense. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Joan, Janet, members of the beautiful Strom Thurmond family, uh, let me say uh, how pleased I am to be here, members of Congress. Uh, I have many stories I could tell you about uh, Senator Thurmond, uh, beginning with the one on the day that I was elected to the United States Senate uh, more than 18 years ago on my first day in the office. Uh, there was a knock on my door. My staff said, Senator Thurman is here to see you. And uh, I didn't know what he had in mind, but he came by and he dropped off a bag of peanuts and a keychain. <laughs> and he said, eat these, son, and it'll uh, keep you healthy. Uh, and I did, and I've been uh, healthy ever since, trying to follow the regime that he has established uh, over the years of physical fitness. But it is fitting to pay tribute to Senator Thurman in this hall of military ceremony embraced by the ranks of the troops that he so loves and protects. And I would not hesitate to say that no American has done more for American security than uh, Senator Strom Thurmond. From the day that he landed at Normandy to liberate Europe on behalf of freedom, to the day that he landed in the United States Senate to legislate on behalf of a strong defense. When we thank God for our safekeeping through the past half century, and the tranquil freedom that we enjoy today, we must also thank God for our guardians, the men and women in blue, green, khaki, and white, and for their guardian angel and senior senator from South Carolina who gives the fullest measure of his devotion to our nation and to our forces. And it will always be a source of pride that I could call this man my distinguished colleague uh, and my friend. Like the long-distance runner that he was at Clemson, the man they call the Therminator, he has just kept on going. His marathon is one of glory runs spanning the hills and stretches of American security in our time. When the Soviet Union flung its dark cape over the free world, he was there to help fling it back. And when the Berlin Wall went up, he was there to sound the alarm. And when it came down, the rubble was marked with his hammer blows. Wherever the flame of aggression flared and threatened us, Senator Strom Thurmond was there to help our nation snuff it out. Over the years, few Americans have deserved or received more accolades than Senator Thurmond. First in uniform himself, where he received 18 decorations for heroism in combat, including five battle stars, the Legion of Merit with Oak Leaf Cluster, the Purple Heart, and the Bronze Star for Valor. It is the hallmark of Senator Thurmond's legendary vigor, not only that he has earned these adornment, adornments, but that he stands so upright with a chest that's weighted so heavily with the bright badges of courage. In the Senate, this soldier became a citizen devoted to a strong defense, and a vote by Senator Thurmond was invariably a vote to protect and defend those who protect and defend our nation, to give our country the muscle behind our national will to deter aggression and to defend and extend our liberty and peace. This true American Gothic has devoted his life to public service. And to glimpse his devotion, we need only to witness the places that are graced with his name. There's a Strom Thurmond shopping mall, a Strom Thurmond lecture hall, a Strom Thurmond room at the Capitol. There's a Strom Thurmond high school, federal building, and student center. Several streets in South Carolina named, uh, are named after him. You can swim in the Strom Thurmond lake cruise down Strom Thurmond Highway and drink the water and the Strom Thurmond Dam. So it's little wonder that we call him an institution. And thus I face the timeless dilemma of the ancient Greek playwright Euripides when he said, how do I praise thee and not overpraise, yet not mar thy grace by any stint thereof? Senator Thurmond gave me that line. 
He was a friend of Euripides. But, but I, believe, I believe that if Euripides had searched the ranks of the gods to capture the likes of this legislator, he may have chosen Prometheus, a titan of Greek mythology whose name literally means forethought. Prometheus shouldered the task of making humans out of the earth, and he remained a devoted friend of mankind. Senator Thurman shouldered the task of making an armed forces out of the best people that our nation can offer, and he has remained a devoted friend of our troops. Prometheus lit his torch with the sun and brought fire to mankind, enabling humans to make the weapons they needed to protect themselves from the dangers of the world. Senator Strom Thurmond lit his torch with a luminous uh, wisdom and helped bring our troops the best technology and our sciences, uh, our sciences can, de, uh, can produce and protect all of us against the dangers in this world. That Prometheus was also um, um, kind enough to humans that he loved so much that he violated a, uh, a rule of the gods. He handed us the gift of fire, and for that he was punished. And the poet Lord Byron captured the trial of Prometheus in the words that reflect the legacy of Strom Thurmond. He wrote, in the endurance and repulse of thine impenetrable spirit, which earth and heaven could not convulse, a mighty lesson we inherit. Senator Strom Thurmond's endurance and impenetrable spirit do offer us a mighty lesson, that freedom is not free, that protecting peace is not a short sprint for the shallow-winded. It's a marathon run that demands a stout heart, a long stride, and strong conviction. But Senator Thurmond's spirit and endurance offer us a human lesson as well, that life itself is a marathon run, that triumphs and the revelations come not in breaking the tape across our chests, but in the trials and efforts of each and every footfall that takes us forward in distance and time, experience and accomplishment. Senator Strom Thurmond has had quite a run. Years ago, when Senator Thurmond was just 29 years old, Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr. gave a radio address in which he explained why he had remained so active at the age of 90. He said, the riders in a race do not stop short when they reach the goal. There's a little finishing canter before coming to a standstill. There is time to hear the kind voice of friends and to say to oneself, the work is done. But just as soon as one says that, the answer comes back, the race is over, but the work is never done, while the power to work remains. On behalf of the United States Armed Forces, let me thank you, Senator Thurman, for never saying that my work is done. Your extraordinary power to work remains, and for that, all of us in this country are infinitely grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Thurmond. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't thank the distinguished secretary, my friend, Secretary Cohen, and General Shelley enough for those kind words. You are blessed with the ability to say nice things about mankind. Again, I thank you. Now, my fellow senators, members of the House of Representatives, Secretary Ms. William Cohen, Deputy Secretary John White, Secretary of the Army Togo West, Secretary of the Air Force Sheila Winall, General Major John Shelley Cashville, members of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, distinguished guests, friends, family, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> As 
as an old soldier, I know that the last thing the members of the color and home guards want to hear is a long speech. So I will keep my remarks short. I am very honored by today's events, especially the presentation of the Department of Defense Medal for Distinguished Public Service, and I thank the officials for awarding this to me. <clears throat> this is very meaningful, as I have dedicated my life to public service. I will proudly display this award in my office. Throughout my career, I've always tried to be an advocate for our military and our men and women in uniform. Unfortunately, many do not see how wise an investment it is to provide for a robust defense. A strong defense is essential to keep America free, keep America safe, keep America prosperous. While I greatly appreciate this honor, it is the young soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen who are really deserving of recognition and praise. They volunteer to serve. They lead a difficult and demanding lifestyle. They make many sacrifices for the benefit of others. I hope they know that we appreciate all that they do for our nation. Thank you again for these high honors which you present to me today. And I will view this medal as a reminder that we must never, never give up the fight for our military and those men and women who serve it. God bless you and God bless America.
ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony.